Hello. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm still getting used to uh, this whole live studio thing here. So I'm Linda Lamb. I'm here to read from uh, my book, Walking Through Your Walls, Loving Yourself and Everyone Else. I wanted to make a, a short comment before I get started. I also read uh, for a book club on Sunday mornings. It's sponsored through Humanities Team and it's a Conversations with God book club. We read mostly Neil Donald Walsh material. And Neil Donald Walsh has a, a very intimate relationship with uh, divinity. And divinity, he calls it God, uh, speaks to him directly. So our experience, his experience of God or divinity and mine are, are very different in the way that we uh, have our connection. But what was interesting today is we're, we happen to be reading the newest book from Neil Donald Walsh called The God Solution, perfect uh, cover for Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody, by the way. Um, but in chapter two, I, I just want to make this note because it's so interesting to me. The whole reason that uh, I, was, I was given the direction to write this chapter, The Halls of History, Tracing Our Timelines, is to make a few points. And we don't get to making those points till the end of the section. But one of the points I think you've already gotten uh, the feel for, which is how much time we spend in conflict or war with each other and for how long we've been doing it and how many wars there have been. And we're only at, what, we stopped at 1800, right? But here in his book, he says, there's been armed conflict somewhere on this planet for 92% of recorded history. So there you have it from a different perspective, the same general point uh, or one of the points that um, I'm trying to make here with this material. Okay, so uh, last week we stopped uh, on page 107 and we, were, uh, we finished up the 1800s. So now we're going to start the 1800s to 1850. And in the Q&A on Tuesday, I'll go through the whole uh, uh, letters uh, business between BC, BCE, CE, and AD, because uh, I've had some people ask, ask about that. So we'll go through and we'll clarify how all that works. Um, now, I have to say, I got this little uh, light to uh, help augment the lighting. And um, what I'm discovering is that maybe I'll put it over here so I'm not looking right at it because now I'm getting a round circle on the page when I'm looking down at it. All right, so let's get started. I'm hoping that we get through this today, uh, this whole history section. So, and, and I broke it down into 50-year uh, chunks for a period here because uh, things are happening quite rapidly now in the 1800s. So 1800 to 1850, philosophers and philosophies include evolutionary theorists, determinists, conservatism, socialism, idealism, pessimism, transcendental transcendentalism, abolish, ab abolitionism, egalitarianism, humer, humanitarian humanism rather, not humanitarianism, humanism. Transcendental, oh, I got it twice there. That's an edit someone gave me, uh, and I need to get that fixed. Passivism, existentialism, and anarchy. And these all emerged as philosophies. So people are doing a lot of thinking about what's happening in the 1800s. Well known philosophers, including um, during this time, include uh, GWF Hegel, Arthur. Uh, Schopenhauer, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Charles Darwin, Soren Kierkegaard, and Henry David Thoreau. Religious developments in this same period, 1800 to 1850, include birth of uh, Baha'u'llah, whose founder, uh, who, who later founds Baha'i, the Baha'i faith, 
Mormonism is founded by Joseph Smith. Campbellites is founded by Alexander and Thomas Campbell and Barston Stone. And uh, Tenrico is founded by Mike Nagawa Nakamaya. Phineas P. Quimbley begins his work in New Thought. The Millerites Second Day Adventists were formed by Walter Miller, by Walter Miller. Christian Delephins were founded by John Thomas. Seventh Day Adventists were founded by E.G. White. And Spiritualism is founded by Kate Margaret Fox. So that's a lot of religions to emerge in a 50 year period. Uh, and then the wars. So wars in this 50 year period, more than 22, include the Napoleonic Wars, the Russo-Persian War, the Rum Rebellion, the Spanish-American Wars of Independence, the Mexican War of Independence, the War of 1812, the Creek War, the Seminole Wars, and the Zulu Wars of Conquest, the Texas Indian Wars, the Greek War of Independence, the Comanche the Comanche Mexico War, the Java War, the Winnebago War, the Black Hawk War, the Texas Revolution, the First Opium War, the Navajo Wars, the Mexican American War, and the Apache Wars. 50 years. In that same 50 year period, the discoveries, inventions, and arts include the first locomotive, the first stethoscope, the, the, um, the discovery that electricity can make magnetism and the discovery that electricity and magnetism used together can make a force. That was pretty significant stuff. Uh, the first electric motor is built, the first mechanical computer. Okay, we're in 1800 to 1850. The first mechanical computer is designed and photography is invented. The idea of resistance in the realm of electricity is developed. The first lawnmower is built along with the first combine harvester and the first refrigerator. Braille is invented. The first revolver is made and Morse code is invented. The electric telegraph is developed. Rubber is vulcanized and electricity is proven to be a kind of energy. Anesthesia is first used. The first typewriter and the first sewing machine are made. The absolute temperature scale or Kelvin scale is discovered, and the first safety pin is made. Now, in the realm of the philosophical uh, structure of spiral dynamics, communitarianism slash egalitarianism meme begins. Seek peace with the inner self and explore with others the caring dimensions of community. Moving on from 1850 to the 1900, philosophers are now abundant, far too many to count, in the areas of egalitarianism, abol abol abolitionism, rather, anarchy, utilitarianism, idealism, pragmatism, existentialism, feminism, and Darwinism, along with other, among any, many others. Familiar names include Sojourner Truth, Karl Marx, Frederick Engels, Susan B. Anthony, William James, Friedrich Nietzsche, Sigmund Freud, and E.G. Moore. In this same period, 1850 to 1900, religious developments include the, uh, the uh, Apocrypha is officially developed from the Bible or removed rather from the Bible in 1885, leaving only 66 books. Jehovah's Witnesses is founded by Charles Taze Russell. The Theological Society is founded by H.P. Lovatsky and Henry Olcott. Christian Science is founded by Mary Eddy Baker. And the Unity School of Christianity is founded by Myrtle Fillmore. In 1850 to 1900, wars during this brief period include the California Indian Wars, the Crimean War, the American Civil War, the Snake War, Red Clouds War, the Comanche Campaign, the Great Sioux War, also the Black Hills War, the Nez uh, Pierce War, the Cheyenne War, the Sheep Eater Indian War, 
Victoriano's War, the Boxer Rebellion, the Second Boer War, and European colonies colonizes the African continent in a rather warful way. Uh, so inventions, discoveries, and the arts include first mechanical submarine, revolving machine gun, dynamite, the stock ticker, the gasoline carburetor, Alexander Graham Bell patents the telephone, the microphone is invented along with the phonograph and the cathode ray tube. Edison developed his electric light, the photophone is developed, the photophone is developed, we're in 1850 to 1900. The micro motorcycle is invented and the world's first skyscraper is built in Chicago. Alternating current systems gained further viability with the introduction of a functional AC motor. The first zipper is designed, wireless communication is developed, and New Zealand becomes the first company to grant women the right to vote. The first diesel engine is built, radio signals are discovered, and the first remote control is made. Note, breaking philosophers up into three periods over the next hundred years became too difficult because of the overlaps in lifetimes. So several memes have been lumped together in the 1900 to 2000 philosophers section below. The next spiral dynamic meme starts around 1950 and the meme after that around 1970. So you see, even in spiral dynamics, it, it's interesting though, because you would think it's the shorter period of time and yet we're at the top of the spiral where it tends to be wider. So that's kind of interesting, but the depth between them, the, the means narrows. So now we're at 1900, 1900 to 2000. Philosophers abound hundreds, perhaps even thousands, covering the realms of pragmatism, existentialism, logical positivism, passivism, Marxism, phenomenalism, hermeneutics, the Akashic records, and integral theory, to name a handful. Some well-known names include uh, George Santana, Santanaya rather, Bertrand Russell, A.O. Lovejoy, Pierre Tichard, um, Pierre, Pierre Tilhard de Chardin, he's a uh, Catholic priest, Jean-Paul Sartre, Anne Rand, Simor, uh, Simone de Bouvier, Wilfred Sellers, Albert Camus, Noam Chomsky, he's still alive, uh, Don Beck, he's still alive, Ervin Laszlo, and Ken Wilber, they are all still alive. There are more people with ideas and philosophies about how life works than can be counted at this point. Excuse me a second. <coughs> I could share a real quick personal story about Pierre Duchardin. When I was about 13, I came across a saying that says, um, you're not a human being having a spiritual experience. You're a spiritual being having a human experience. And when I read it when I was 13, it, it just, it struck me as so true and perfect. And yet I did not know where the saying came from. I didn't know uh, who he was and I, I don't think it even had a name with it when I found the quote. So fast forward to something like 2012 and I'm in Los Angeles at a workshop that Barbara Marks Hubbard was holding about becoming a agent of conscious evolution. And uh, she was a very big um, Pierre de Chardin fan. In between that period of time, however, I have come to fairly, uh, to not care for the Catholic religion for many reasons, right? So it, be, it was a big shock to me to find out that this phrase, this quote that I had lived, it within my heart for my entire life, ever since I was about 13, maybe I was 11 when I first found it. You're not a human being having a spiritual experience. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. Came from a Catholic priest. It, it was um, 
I found to be quite ironic. So, uh, from 1900 to 1950, war and other developments include the Russian Revolution, the Mexican Revolution, World War I, the Russian Civil War, the Turkish War of Independence, the Irish War of Independence, the Chinese Civil War, and we're still in a 50-year period, or we've gone back to a 50-year period. The Spanish Civil War, World War II, millions of Jews were relocated and killed by the Nazi government during the Holocaust. The Greek Civil War, the Arab-Israel War, atomic bombs are dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The first meeting of the UN General Assembly takes place. Churchill's Iron Curtain speech marks the beginning of the Cold War. Gandhi's civil disobedient movement leads in to an independent India, and the Arab League launches modern pan-Arabism. In that same 50-year period, religion continues to grow with the following developments. The Rosicrucian Fellowship is founded by Max Heindel. The ancient language Hebrew is revived with results which results in it being spoken by a total of about 9 million people worldwide today. In France, the law on the separation of church and state is passed, officially establishing state secularism and putting an end to the funding of religious groups by the state in France. The Pentecostal assemblies of the world are formed. Rudolf Steiner founds Anthros Anthroposophy, as a new religion, Agilsa Ni Cristo, an international Christian religion that originated in the Philippines is founded by Felix uh, Manalo, and, the international, and <clears throat> the international New Thought Alliance is founded. Oneness Pentecostalism is founded by Frank Ewart, G.T. Hayward and Glenn Cook. The True Jewish, or the True Jesus Church is founded by Paul Y. Ling Se Chang and Bambas Chang. Ernest Holmes founds, oh, that was th the three names that, that founded the True Jesus Church. And then we have Ernest Holmes founds religious science. Alice Bailey founds the Arcane School. The Science of the Mind, the chief textbook of religious science is published. Mind Science, founded by Ernest Holmes. A, so that's the medic, because I think I, we just read his name twice. Um, the Assembly of Yeshua is the first religious organization in the sacred name movement. Black Muslims, Nation of Islam, is founded by Wallace D. Fard. Guy W. Ballard. Um, <clears throat> for some reason his dates are in here, 1878 to 1939, states the I am, I guess I wanted the, the dates in there because it's he starts the I am religious movement. So that, and that, that becomes a critical moment in time as we look forward, as we look forward in time to making a new world, a world based on, uh, the understanding that everything is consciousness of divinity. Uh, the internal way, no, the way international rather, founded by Victor P. Wirewheel. Uh, Latter Rain is founded by Franklin Hall and George Warnock, and Jews return to their ancient biblical homeland, and the state of Israel is created. The worldwide Church of God is founded by Herbert W. Armstrong. The Self-Realization Fellowship is founded by, um, I always have a hard time with the first name here, Paramananda Yogananda. And the Silva Mind Control is founded by Joseph Silva. Between 1900 and 1950, elsewhere in the world, the first vac vacuum cleaner is built, the first powered airplane is made, Einstein announces his theory of relativity and the helicopter, radio amplifier, and color photography are invented. Picasso's Les Demons d'Abigon 
uh, introduces cubism and bakelite is invented. Rutherford discovers the structure of the atom and announces it is mostly space. Ford develops the first moving assembly line. Sanger founds the international birth control movement. The global Spanish flu epidemic happens. The first sound film is made and the electromechanical television system is developed. And Farmsworth de uh, demonstrates the working model of a television. Lemaitre proposes the Big Bang Theory. The first antibiotics are developed and penicillin is discovered. Hubble proposes his theory of expanding the universe. The US stock market crash precipitates global depression. The first jet engine is built. The first ballpoint pen is created. The aqua lung is developed and so is the, elect the encryption ma machine and a decoding machine. The first electronic computer, ENIAC, E N I A C, is built. The first microwave oven is built. Train and automobile travel becomes commonplace. Modern Western medicine becomes an establishment. So now here's something that we can all, well, many of us can probably relate to. So we're in the period of 1900 to 1950. And I think microwaves became household items, common household items in the mid 18, 1980s. So about took about 30 years. Whereas televisions took off a lot faster. It seems like televisions took off almost immediately. Wars continued. Okay, so now we're in 19, uh, I have it broken down 1950 to 1969. So just a very short sure while. Let me not skip the spiral dynamics. Whole, holistic, integrative slash one world mean begins at 1950. 1950 to 1960, oh, okay, and I skipped another line. Live fully and responsibly as what you are and learn to become. So a little more introspective. Uh, 1950 to 1969, so not quite, just 20 years. Yeah. Wars included the Korean War, the Mau Mau Uprising, the Cuban Revolution, the Algerian War, the Vietnam War, and the Bay of Pigs in invasion. Religious developments during this period include Scientology was founded by L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, Wicca was publicized by uh, Gerald Gardner. The Unific Unification Church was founded by Reverend Sung Moon. The Institute of the Divine Metaphysical Research is founded by Henry Kinley, the Church Universal and Triumphant, is founded by Mark and E.C. Prophet, and Henry Kinley begins the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, DMR. Various neo-pagan and New Age movements gain momentum. Transcendental Meditation is founded by Maharashi Yogi, and the Unitarian Universalism is founded from the is formed from the merger of Unitarianism and Universalism. And the Church of All Worlds, the first American, American neo-pagan church, is formed by a group including Oberon Zell, Ravenheart, Morning Glory, Zell Ravenheart, and Richard Lance Christie. The Vatican sends a letter, which becomes known as the Crimean Solicitation, Solicit Oh, it's in Italian. That's why I'm having a hard time with it. Yeah, the Crimean solicitations to all pertinent parties that were that there were specific guidelines for dealing with any church person engaging in sexual abuse of parishioners. So that was, I don't have the exact year, but that was between 1950 and 1969. And we are still today dealing with that problem. Uh, Echinar, the ancient science, let's see. Yes, Echinar, the ancient science of soul travel, Ek, was founded by Paul Twitchell. 
and the Assembly of Yahweh is founded by Jacob Meyer. The Church of Satan is founded by Anton Levy, or Levey, and the International Society of Hare Krishna is formed. The Children of God is founded by David Moses Berg, and this just scratches the service. Many, many self-proclaimed prophets emerge. From 1950 to 69, around the world, abstract expression is introduced, the nuclear reactor is developed, DNA structure is discovered, Brown versus the Board of Education begins unraveling the US racial integration or segregation. The first optical fiber and first video cassette recorder were made. The Russians launch Sputnik and Sputnik 11. The US lands on the moon. The first silicone chip is manufactured. Mary and Louise Leakey uncover, or Lewis rather, Mary and Louis Leakey uncover humanoid fossils. Of the uh, other firsts include the laser, the optical disc, computer mouse, ATM machines, hypertext, and video game console. In 1969, Armstrong and Aldrin walk on the moon, and ARPANET, the internet, is developed by the U.S. Department of Defense. Spiral dynamics meme now kicks in the holistic, individualistic slash collective mean, experience the wholeness of existence through mind and spirit. So from 1970 to the end of the 1990s, 1999, wars included in this period, the Soviet war in Afghanistan, the Iranian revolution, which results in the establishment of the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Iran-Iraq War, the Falklands War, the Gulf War, the Croatian War, and the Kosovo War, the El Salvador War, Lebanon Conflict, and the Invasion of Granada, the Tanker War, the Invasion of Panama, the um, Somali Civil War, Intervention in Haiti, and the Bosnian War in a 20-year period. I guess it's a 30-year period. The religious developments during that same period include Findhorn Community is founded by Peter and Eileen Caddy and David Spangler. Jane Roberts publishes the first volume of her channel, Seth Material. The Divine Light Mission is founded by Guru um, Sri Hans G. Mahaji. Uh, the Marishi includes a world plan to introduce transcendental meditation to the entire world. CARP, the collective, or the Collegiate Association for the Research of Principles, is established in the United States to introduce the teachings of Sun Myon Moon. And the Assemblies of Yahweh are founded by, um, by Sam Surratt. Numerous religious leaders are accused of impropriety, including embezzling and lavish personal display, including but not limited to Jim and Tammy Baker and Jimmy Swagger. A Course in Miracles, which contains channeled information received by Helen Schuchman, is published. Jay-Z Knight begins channeling Ramtha. The Church of Christ International is founded by Kip McKean. Shirley McCain publishes Out on a Limb, and Out on a Limb television miniseries is broadcast. Deepak Chopra meets the Mahara, Maharishi and joins Transcendental Meditation. The Terra Center is founded by Benjamin Cream. The House of Yewa, um, Abilene, is founded by Jacob Hawkins. And the Aquarian Conspiracy by Marilyn Ferguson, sometimes called a New Age Bible, is published. Rantha School of Enlightenment is founded. The Silver Scrolls, believed to be the oldest Bible text ever found, is found. James Renfield publishes the Celestine Prophecy. And Deepak Chobra publishes Ageless Body, Timeless Mind, the quantum alternative to growing old. After Chopra's appearance on the Winfrey Oprah, on the Oprah Winfrey Show, he sells 130 copies of the book in one day. Uh, and the point of that is, where is the where what's where are the mind of the people, right? It's it it's a movement that's been uh, building for quite some time.
Winfrey also uh, boosted the career of Marianne Williamson, an advocate of the program, A Course in Miracles. So Chopra teaches Ayurveda, a form of Indian folk medicine, and his book, Seven Spiritual Laws of Success, claims that humans can be healed from all problems by opening themselves up to the flow of the single source of universal energy. So there's a, a personal note here in the book from, from me. Uh, at, I say, I find it incredibly interesting that in spite of the brilliant information that Deepak Chopra and others brought forth during this time period, it continues to language in implementation. Here it is many years later, and instead of each of us embracing the single source of universal energy and becoming the creators that we truly are, we choose as a whole to remain in a competitive mindset manipulated to a large extent by capitalism. And I think uh, that has been extremely highlighted in the last uh, 12 to 18 months, maybe the last four years, five years, but really with the onset of COVID, I think that COVID has helped us see that to a great extent. And I just, a quick thank you to the people that are here watching. I really, it's nice to have people that I know are here. I really appreciate it. Um, and I was going to, let me send this message as well. So if you are watching from a a group on Facebook and you want your name to be visible, if you put a comment in, this is how um, uh, and it broke it up, but I just put it in the chat there, how to do it. If you're on Facebook and you're in a group, uh, it won't show your name to anyone uh, until you go to Facebook, StreamYard Facebook, or Facebook StreamYard rather. So, um, if that's important to you. Otherwise, you can make comments here, and if you have any questions, feel free. Um, I'm gonna keep reading now. Okay, let's see where we were. Okay, so here we are. We're at uh, the end of uh, the 20th century, 1970 to 1999. Meanwhile, in the world at large, these things were happening. Internet protocol, HTTP and HTML code are invented along with a plethora of other technology, starting with things like eight track tapes and reel to reel cassettes. VHS wins out over beta, CDs and DVDs replace tape, MP3 and MP4 files replace those. Video games, digital answering machines, text messaging, beepers, pagers, cell phones, GPS and drones are invented and move us into a dizzying speed of growth and change. Email is invented along with liquid crystal displays, pocket calculators, and floppy disks. Internet networking is invented, smallpox is eradicated, and scientists identify AIDS. The camcorder is invented, the fall of communism happens in Eastern Europe. Presidents and other political figures engage in sessions with psychics like Gene Houston. The internet and the World Wide Web begin to change the way we communicate, the way we do business, and the way we live. It's a digital revolution, and by the end of the century, the advance in technology has begun to blur the lines of privacy and government oversight. Spiral Dynamics meme, the ninth mystery meme of wholeness, consciousness, begins. We are one with everything and everyone. So that's the ultimate knowledge. That's the, that is the final step uh, in, in what we need to learn in order to fix what, what is here into what we would prefer, which is a place of love and peace and harmony and compassion and kindness. Uh, and we're 20 years from, from there at this point, 21 years from there at this point. So now this book came out in 2016. So when it says 2000 to present, it really uh, sort of ended in 2016, obviously. So we'll have to 
on our own fill in the blanks from there. Since we have yet to find our way to peace, the wars and military actions of the 21st century thus far include the U.S.-Afghanistan War, which according to Wikipedia continues uh, at this publication. Uh, and I'd have to think, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we're totally out of there even now. Um, so, uh, as does the U.S. involvement in Iraq and Operation Ir Inherent Resolve is also going on, or was at least in 2016. The uh, Iraq War, the war in Somalia, military intervention in Libya and the Gaza War. Numer numerous clashes in the Middle East continue. It's hard to keep track of the conflicts. Terrorism grips the planet. The fear of it is especially high in the United States after the attack of 9-11-2001. Numerous terrorist attacks occur around the world. The United States also forces a war, faces a war on guns as domestic deaths from assault rifles in the hands of criminal and or mentally unstable becomes a growing problem. Religious and oneness movements really take off. Multiple and various movements of interfaith and oneness, mindfulness, and meditation gave momentum. New religions are abundant and circles develop to crop up with more frequency as a way of coming together, offering an alternative to a traditional to re religious gatherings. Increased reports of sexual abuse among the clergy and staff and accusations of a cover-up completely rocked the Catholic Church in this time period. In April of 2010, the response, in response to excessive negative publicity and criticism of the Pope, the Vatican enters what the Associated Press calls full damage control. Okay, that didn't happen until 2010. And what were we reading about? Like the first signs of it, the first reports of it were back in 1950. So that's, that's an example of how when you're in power, you can control things. You can control the release of news and information. For it to take 60 years for it to become to light was really, that's... It's just heart heartbreaking. Uh, so that was full damage control in eight, April of 2010. Uh, also, during this period of time, Humanities Team is created by Neil Donald Walsh. I made reference to him at the beginning of the tape, or this recording, rather. Uh, spiral, the spiral author of the rather spiritual author of the Conversations with God book series, Neil Donald Walsh. And on the solstice, December 21st, 2012, Conscious Evolution welcomes the birth of a new era founded by Barbara Marks Hubbard. The Catholic Church faces the resignation of a pope and the newly selected Pope Francis uh, lacazizes and excommunicates a pedophile priest. So during the same period of time, since the beginning of 2000, 21st century, around the world, big pharma comes into its own, dominating commercial television commercials with ads to fix everything from sexual problems to restless legs to demanding bladders. There's a pill for that, becomes a standard joke. Many cancers are cured and an addiction to painkillers and heroin takes over the United States. The technical digital age takes over the world and the way we communicate, the way we do business, watch movies, watch television, the way we play games, the way we exercise, the way our homes and vehicles work, along with the way we listen to music changes. In fact, because of the way computers and operating systems work, we have entered an area of continual change, growth and expansion. Digital satellite radio is invented the discovery of Eros, an astral body 27% larger than Pluto, trumps Pluto to become the ninth largest body known to orbit our sun. Its discovery prompts a redefinition of the term planet, and Pluto is declassified as a dwarf planet. 
or reclassified as a dwarf planet. The discovery of Eris is the trigger that changes the face of our solar system, defining the planets and adding Pluto to a growing number of dwarf planets. Mary Higby Schweitzer and colleagues discover what appeared to be soft tissues inside a fossil, fossilized T-Rex femur. Scientists confirm the existence of dark matter, even though they still can't explain what it is. <clears throat> You know, I think the, the point of that, it just strikes me that, what you know, why do we care about Mary Higby Schweitzer and colleagues discover what appear to be soft tissue inside a fossilized T-Rex femur? Because that would allow them to clone. That That's the point of that. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Scientists continue or confirm the existence of dark matter, even though they still can't explain what it is. Exoplanets are firmly or finally confirmed after detection in the 1990s. And these alien worlds have begun to be seen orbiting distant stars uh, by two different observatories. Cyborgs are becoming reality with numerous robotic limbs being controlled by their owners or wearers' minds. Stem cell research takes a huge leap when two different sets of scientists discover they can use human cells, and by essentially turning back the clock, the cells become um, pluripotent cells, or cells that can end up being virtually any other kind of cell. Water is discovered on the planet Mars, leading to further speculation of microbial life there. The human genome is mapped, along with dozens of other species, including pigs, dogs, bees, mosquitoes, pufferfish, chimpanzees, yeast, corn, and rice. Climate modelers admit they were wrong in their models and now project that Europe's glaciers are likely to be entering their final decades. The snows of Kilimanjaro and other low latitude mountains could disappear completely, and there will likely be ice-free summers in the Arctic Ocean. Well, we've seen that. Not completely free, but you can, you can sail all the way through the Arctic Ocean now, over the top. Rising ocean levels cause low-lying coastal areas to re-evaluate their futures. Climate changes around the globe makes the news on a regular basis, and on and on it goes. Some of the most recent and significant developments include, on July 4th of 2012, so not that long ago, the discovery of a new particle with a mass between 125 and 127 GeV was announced. Physicists suspect it is the Higgs boson, a particle predicted to science to exist since the 1960s, but never seen till now. On December 1st, 2015, an article cites recently published studies of Professor Ajit Varki at the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine, who found intriguing evidence of uniquely human gene variants we unexpectedly discovered that humans have evolved gene variants that can help protect the elderly from dementia. So we're all busy in a lab looking for a pill for that, when in fact it's already within us. It's contained within us, the solution. I think that's just so brilliant. Uh, on, on December 15th, 2015, two teams of physicists working independently at CERN reportedly reported preliminary hints of a possible new subatomic particle. If real, one possibility is that the particle could be a heavier version of a Higgs boson. In my theory, this discovery brings us one step closer to scientists understanding that consciousness is everywhere and in everything. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is all there is. Scientists aren't quite there yet, but they're getting very close. They are. Uh, today, okay. Oh, hey, here we are. Yay! We still have 15 minutes left. 
I love it. Um, okay, we're caught up in time to the end of the year before publication of this book. Enough of the timeline. What strikes you the most? Are you exhausted? I know I am. It was exhausting researching this timeline because conflicting information, which seemed to be rather a constant occurrence, kept me chasing my tail. Every once in a while, though, there would be a new jewel, like the article I found that was just two hours old about be, us being new humans, the next to the last entry in the timeline. Well, that, uh, yeah, and that's the one about the dementia. Uh, because we are new humans. We don't even realize the um, amazing qualities and potential that we have. And once every once in a while, there would be a complete heartbreak. An author I highly regard in his journals may or may not be legit. Uh, yeah, somebody I, I really uh, have the highest regard for, but there are people who have questioned his work. I haven't though seen any, uh, I haven't seen any proof. I've seen the questioning, but I haven't seen any proof. So, um, but I won't, I don't tend to reference the work because of that. You see, life is a moving target, isn't it? No matter how sure you might be about something, you can likely find someone who will disagree with you or some new information to dispute you, what you know. This is one of the points I will remind you of numerous times. If you want to know the truth, you need to go inward. Everything you need to know is accessible from within you. In section two, we'll go into this concept in much more detail. And in volume two, we'll go into it in depth. But what strikes me the most about the timeline is that life tends to come down to these three things. Advancement of life, science, inventions, the arts, theories about life, religion and philosophy, and the protection of life and the acquisition of territory, war, which was also often based on beliefs, religion. As there were more people, there were more ideas of how life works, which led to more conflicts and more different agreements to fight about. I hope it became clear that just about everyone has some idea of how to explain what's going on in life, some theory, philosophy, or religion. Humans have been seeking answers since the beginning of time, and lots of people think they know. There are numerous light bringers, there were numerous light bringers before Yeshua, Ben Joseph, came along, and there are more modern day light bringers today than can be counted. In essence, it seems like what all of life revolves around is whose idea or ideas you decide to believe and killing those who disagree with you. Forgive my bluntness. There are thousands of religions and philosophies. There are hundreds or thousands of self-declared messiahs or people who believe they have all the answers and should be followed. The further we go along, the more people there are, the more theories, the more choices, and the more reasons to disagree and fight, the more reasons to feel isolated and alone. If only we were all aware of the Akashic Records or the Book of Life, Theorized throughout the ages, the Kashic Records is the one great mind. It is the knowledge of the all that is. It is your soul's history and memory and mine. It is the history of your soul's history and memory. Oh, sorry. It is the history and the future of the universe and all that is. Akasha, which is Sanskrit for primary substance, is the energy that makes up everything in the universe. Every vibration that occurs in the universe through our thoughts, words, and deeds creates an indelible imprint on the Akasha, leaving an energetic record of every creation, of every soul, of everything. This is why I am repeatedly suggesting to you that you have everything you need to know within you. You have direct access to the truth. 
by the time I was nearing the end of the uh, uh, timeline, I became aware of a feeling of despair that had overcome me. Life to, seems to be, have become a dizzying array of conflict over theories. I could see and feel what many people who have no hope see and feel. I have a dear friend, a woman who was a co as a college student, worked as a housekeeper one summer for a lodging business my husband and I manage. She's a young mother and is, and is considering enlisting in the military. In our discussion, she made this statement, there will never be peace. Those words cut me to my core. But after going through this timeline, I can at least understand how someone can think that there can never be peace. Let me say right now that it's extremely important we never say statements like that, especially with emotion or intent, which we'll get into in section two uh, and in the supplement and in volume two. It's easy to see how depressing life can seem, though. It's easy to see how one might think that things will never change, that things can never change. And it's easy to see how, feel, how life can feel without hope. But one of the last entries in the timeline was hopeful. The article talked about how as a species, we know how important our elders, mind, our elders knowledge is and our bodies adapted so we could keep our minds stronger, longer. That's pretty amazing. Consider what the possibilities are. Actually, what I like to think happened is that we as a species knew that we needed the elders coming up. The elders of what are currently the awake movement, the ones who have managed to navigate life su successfully without this handbook, to retain their memories, therefore, we had to adapt to whatever third dimension physical influence has been interfering with our memories. Our ability to adapt is one thing. How and why we adapt is another. While Darwin may have identified some aspects that might apply, there is something much more powerful than traditional evolution occurring in humans. Put another way, in my language, our great parent knows that dementia creates more problems than it cures. So the great parent has adapted us to eliminate dementia, except for those whose souls choose the experience for a learning tool. So let's move on for now. Here's my favorite timeline nugget. I didn't embed it above because I really wanted to savor it. David Hawkins was a New Age author and philosopher who developed a scale of consciousness around 1900, or rather 1990. He coined the term homo spiritus as an evolved human with Jesus consciousness. Technically, I believe that would make him a homo sapius spiritus. Hawkins' theory included using kinesi ki um, kinesiology muscle testing as a way to determine your state of consciousness. He also linked frequencies or hertz to the frequency or vibration of our bodies. So here's a brief overview of the Hawkins scale of consciousness. Although Hawkins' original scale went from zero to a thousand, later work has expanded the scale to infinity. Some who body test now, someone who body tests at infinity using kinesiology would be someone with God consciousness. Someone testing at 500,000 would be an archangel. And so his original Hawkins scale, and in the book it is in a um, list like this, I think we're going to go ahead and finish this chapter. I'm excited. So I'm actually going to start at the bottom and read upward. Shame is below 30 on the scale from zero to infinity, right? Guilt 
is in the 30 to 50 frequency. Apathy is in 50 to 75. And you know what? Apathy is something that I think a lot of people felt yesterday, at the end of yesterday. Um, I'm an, uh, I'm a, what I would call a collective empath. Uh, and, and when something uh, global or, you know, big, like in a country, at a country level or at the planet level, when those things happen, uh, I feel them. And I think apathy was part of what I was feeling yesterday. I was also feeling a lot of grief. And that's uh, from 75 to 100. There was a lot of fear as well. And that's from 100 to 125. Desire, you might think that would be a higher frequency, but it's actually 125 to 150. And the reason for that, it's actually in between fear and anger. And the reason for that is that it's a, it's a desire is a function of the body. It's actually a, a, a wiring. Uh, it's a part of the actual physical housing that we reside in. And so in and of itself, it's going to be of a fairly low frequency. Uh, pride is at 175 to 200. And 200 is the same as 40 hertz. So if you're somebody who thinks in, the, in terms of sound frequencies, uh, 200 on this scale is equal to 40 hertz. Courage is 200 to 250. Neutrality is 250 to 310. Willingness is 310 to 350. Acceptance is 350 to 400. Reason is 400 to 500. Love, which David Hawkins always had a phrase, love or above. In fact, he wrote a book, I think, with that title, Love or Above. Love is at 500. And remember the scale originally, his original scale just went to 1,000. So 528 hertz is what uh, we refer to as the love frequency in terms of sound. Joy on this scale is from 540 to 600. Peace is from 600 to 700. And enlightenment is from 700 to 1,000. And so, again, going back to the, they're not footnotes, but uh, when they moved the scale, the, the people who followed this work and then took it to the next level expanded the scale to infinity. And by doing that, someone who, uh, tested infinity would have God consciousness and someone testing at 500,000 would be an archangel. Uh, enlightenment, 700 to 1,000 would be Jesus consciousness. 1,000 would be Jesus consciousness. I personally know that there are now many people testing at infinity on the Hawkins scale and likely scores of people at the 700 to 1,000 range with another huge number at the love or above range. Here's a quote from Dwight D. Eisenhower. Together, we must learn how to compose difference, not with arms, but with intellect and decent purpose. Doesn't this bode well for what lies ahead that so many people are testing at infinity and so many others are testing at love or above? It is an incredibly exciting and certainly, it is incredibly exciting and certainly nothing I could have predicted when I sat in a metaphysical circle back in the 1980s or 90s. So it's beautiful to me that the movement I thought was fringe back then has actually gained the momentum to help create an awakening in humanity and assist with the recreation of the self to source, reconnection of the self to source. What excites me most is the opportunity we have for me to shine my unique lights with you so that you too might look at the timeline and see it the way I do when I look through my eyes, not the eyes of a researcher, as an interesting documentation of a game of light, life we're playing here in the third dimension. To look at it and laugh at the craziness instead of crying over the insanity. To look at it and smile at the lunacy instead of weeping over the waste. 
to look at it and see how perfect it is in that it has led us to this moment in time, you and me conversing here in a handbook about how life, about life and how we are learning to live in it consciously, how we are waking up after so many years of living asleep. What were the most interesting things to you in the timeline? Why were they interesting? You might write them down just to think about them. <clears throat> and then we'll close, look at this right on time with a, a quote from Robert Penn Warren. History cannot give us a program for the future, but it can give us a fuller understanding of ourselves and of our common humanity so that we can face, better face the future. Um, well, and let's do this last. I know we're a little bit over, but um, we've got a page about the root chakra, singing to your root. When your energy vibrates at a frequency that is within direct alignment to what the universe has been attempting to deliver your entire life, you begin to live in the flow and true miracles start to happen. That's Panashta Sai. The tone of the root chakra is C, or a hertz of 261.6, between neutrality and willingness on the Hawkins scale. You can sing songs that use the tone C, and you can also listen to tonal music. There are a number of different frequencies, chakra tones, and songs using Solvagio frequencies available. I'm a big fan of making up songs I sing in the car, and anytime I find myself alone, you might find me singing an affirmation or a clearing statement. I don't sing random things. Everything I sick is, it's, sing is picked for the power of the tones or the words. Try singing some of these clearing statements for your root chakra, or just make up a tune you like, uh, or sing these phrases to a tune you already know and like. I release and let go of anything and everything that is causing me fear and anxiety. I am happy and safe standing firmly on my two legs. I release and let go of any and all things that cause me to feel unstable. My heart is like a singing bird. Christiana Rosini. Well, that's the end of uh, that chapter. We'll start chapter six, Deconstructing Religion, next week. Uh, thank you to all who came and uh, and passed by. Uh, thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes, thank you to you as well. Uh, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Uh, and then I'll do the Q&A at the same time on Tuesday. You can send your questions to questions at walkingthroughyourwalls.com or you can text them to 907-351-3003. I'm just checking to make sure nobody uh, sent a message while we were reading. No, I don't see anything. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you so much again. Much love. Namaste.